whole um, importance of being able to get you to employment, you understand the association between employment and health and income and health and being able to have choices. You understand the importance of warm homes, of the environment to live in. And there's also a question of how we use um, our influence to create environments that are health promoting. So if you look at somewhere like the Netherlands, for example, and how they make it easy to buy places, you know, how does our spatial force allow us to uh, try and keep it sensitive? Okay, so that's where spatial planning comes in. <laughs> I won't go into every bit of the report because I'm just presenting it to you to let you know it's there and to recommend that you have a read of it and that perhaps we could talk about some more of the particular areas that you might be specifically interested in um, in a bit more depth, perhaps. But this, uh, slide just gives you a snapshot of some of the really good things that are going on across our borough. And we we'll start at the top left with this fantastic school bus. Um, there's the child poverty bus. There's some wonderful work going on in those schools. And the, the report makes recommendations that we learn from those and we build on that. We need to be keen to see that. We see in the Eat Well group uh, going up there. Um, we can't see it too clearly there, but there are people dressed up as burgers and slices. Um, I did refuse to actually adopt those, but I was uh, very entertained. And working extraordinarily well with local schools, particularly in Rock Perry, um, where over 200 out of 218 families at school took part in improving health and eating. I know that's our environmental health team, and they're absolutely passionate about this stuff, so they did a fantastic job uh, in engaging, supported by the children. We've got healthy homes, we've been making sure that environment has been made positive and there's been lots and lots of homes benefiting from that. We've got a new programme of reducing the strength, that's trying to reduce the amount of super strength markers available on the street to buy. So that's one of the key risks we have in terms of that availability. And we also have a really good programme around the project that has health related workers and trying to get people to be uh, unwell. Really good examples there of case studies of work that we're doing. But on every aspect, I suppose we have to challenge ourselves is there a, a further step we can go? Is there an aspiration we can have? So I suppose my ask is that uh, we have a twofold. First of all, about food in place. What can we do um, in our, uh, our, our, our role as we're always elected members as members of the council as partners to actually deliver a step change in some cases. How can we shape our planning? How can we think about cumulative impact planning? So things like you know, how many uh, streets are full of uh, fast food outlets, um, you know, alcohol outlets all over the city, what's our potential for the staff? How risk aware do you want to be how risk averse do you want to be in terms of Elected members are working very closely with members. We have a, a unique relationship with those relationships and with those neighbourhoods. So it's about capitalising on that and the work that you're doing as a member as well to really build the strength of our communities and the resilience of our communities. And thinking about how we work across between our and social affairs, but with bringing the joint approach to uh, people getting the right efforts in the right place. And then also thinking about the life course. And we do this already, but going through and um, really keeping our focus on that in those early years because there's just the evidence is so strong that they're doing that in such a difference to your future life. Education in the schools and making that whole school approach. We've seen it in the climate science I think around the child poverty and um, mm -hmm. really is a good example of sort of doing just that. And uh, employment, families in poverty are families that are going to be more challenged. So, the more we can do to get families with an income in that is um, going to be sustained, um, the better. So, those are some of the key areas that the report has that we focus our energies on. I just think the fundamental thing that we want to do through everything that we're doing is give people more of the
Francis Review, and the recommendation is at 2.2 .2 of the report. Um, you agreed that a health and care performance panel be established to scrutinise the performance of health and social care in the world. So the panel was put in place for the last municipal year, and feedback from the members directly involved in the panel has been positive, and therefore it's proposed that the panel continues for this municipal year, and that the terms of reference which are attached as an appendix are, are st stay the same as last year's. When the panel was introduced last year, it was introduced on a politically proportionate basis and uh, the proposal is that this will continue the membership for 15-16, so that the membership will be uh, four Labour members, two Conservative and one Labour Democrat. The proposal is that the Chair and Vice Chair will be nominated at the first meeting of the panel with deputies being nominated as detailed in terms of reference. Six meeting dates will be agreed for the panel and the work plan for the panel is proposed to be agreed at the first meeting of the panel. So there are the two, me two recommendations, Chair, that the committee approves the proposed terms of reference for the panel, health and care performance panel, and it's request the committee is requested to make the appropriate nominations for members and for deputies to the panel as well. No, thanks, Chair. I mean, I, I do think that this has been treated quite a lot My, from our point of view, our family for membership of this um, panel will be myself, uh, Denise Roberts, Trina Johnson and Phil Bridal, and the deputies will be all the other member, Labour members of this committee. I don't know if you're in a position to give your nomination.
stressed the necessity to promote the coordination and cooperation between Health Watch, the Health and Wellbeing Board, and the local government scrutiny committees, as in this case. And locally, the review of practices, which I referred to in the earlier report, identified two recommend recommendations for this area, and they are set out in 2.2 of the report. What we have done is rep rep representatives of the three bodies that I previously mentioned have, have recently met to review what the practical working relationships are and could be for the river. And as a result of that, um, it was in order to secure stronger working relationships, it was agreed that a draft protocol or agreement to develop those working relationships should be produced. And that is attached as an appendix to this report. And the areas that the protocol the agreement focuses on are around exchange of information intelligence and uh, how we can work better together on areas of mutual concern, looking at where there is duplication and how we can avoid that, and how we provide a shared understanding of the process of referrals and how we our arrangements for dealing with such referrals. So in addition to that draft protocol, it is also proposed that whilst it has come to this committee, it will also go to the Health and Wellbeing Board and Health Watch to get the hope to get the agreement there. And subject to any amendments that have been made, that we'll hope that, that can be signed off and approved by the three bodies that I've just mentioned. And, and just to mention to you, Chair, that practically we have agreed that the manager of Health Watch just come to the Health and Care Performance Panel and has also been invited to attend this committee as a non voting member as well in North Australia, connectivity across the three bodies. So, just there are recommendations set out in section 13, Chair, which is about proposing the agreement the committee would approve the proposed agreement for joint working as set out in the appendix, and the officers would agree with the chair and the spokes. Persons to finalise any amendments to the draft agreement following the consultation with the bodies. Questions? I mean, we didn't discuss what's working in this show, last couple of months. And although we were all comfortable with the um, relationship between ourselves and Health Watch, particularly, um, we were a bit perplexed as to where we fitted with um, Health and Wellbeing Board and where Health and Wellbeing Board fitted with us. I think this will help mm -hmm. uh, in that relationship. And so, thank you, we work with officers.
Um, spotlight sessions um, increased in, in the amount of interest we got in them as the year went on. Um, I'm not so sure that we need to, we should call them focus sessions because I know the health and wellbeing board have focus sessions and there was some confusion about um, whose sessions they were. So I think we may need to call them, I don't know, something else to think about. Um, but in fact, we've got the first one in July, which I think is 69 and 20, um, and that is on from Vanguard State. Um, these are open to all members of the council, and actually last year we got some really good take, particularly on things like the Care Act and a couple of others I can't remember um, that were really well ahead. So they are, we do offer them to all members of the council. Um, we have items that would normally come here and just be noted. Um, we have, there are some of those get circulated electronically. I don't take up too much time on this, but we do want members to be aware of the information that's contained, and we continue to do that. We've had a report on the 